Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Eleni. I'm a second year dental student and I go to Tufts University. Today I'm going to be going over the keyhole section of the PAT. And if you don't know, the PAT is the perceptual ability section of the DAT. And the DAT is the dental admissions test. So if you did want to go to dental school, you have to take this exam. So I'll be going over keyhole today and yeah, let's get into this video. Keyholes is the section we will cover in this video. There are 15 questions in this section and I suggest about 50 seconds per question for a total of about 12 and a half minutes for this section. In this section, you will be presented a 3D object and you must determine which of the five openings in the answer choices would allow the object to pass through with a perfect fit. The object can pass through in any orientation, but it cannot be rotated or twisted around as it is passing through the keyhole. The external outline of the object is the exact shape and size of the opening without being too big or too small or having any extra protrusions. In this example here, this object could probably fit in any of these holes, but it can only fit through one keyhole perfectly. So here's a list of all the rules for this section, many of which we just talked about. Rule number one says that the solid object may be turned in any direction before passing through the keyhole, and it may go through the aperture on a side that is not in view. The object can be manipulated in any way to enter the hole. But, as said in rule number two, the object cannot be twisted or turned as it is going through the hole. It must pass through completely straight. The opening will always be the exact shape of the object. Also, as said in rule number three, the keyhole and the object are drawn to scale, so they must be the same size. So, there could be a keyhole that has the right shape, but is too small or too large, and therefore would not be the correct keyhole. Rule number four says that there are no hidden irregularities of the object. So any parts we cannot see will not have any extra extensions or protrusions. Also though, symmetrical indentations that we can see can be assumed to continue symmetrically to portions we cannot see. And rule number five says that there will only be one correct answer for each question. So test strategy number one is to visualize the object from the front, top, and side views. To help you visualize this, you can imagine the shadow the object will create from shining a light on the front, the top, or the side. So, if we wanted to use this shadow method on this example, here are the three views or shadows that we would see from the different views of the object. So, if we look from the front, this is the shadow we would see with this triangle here and the rest of the block here to the right. Then, if you were looking from the side or end, you would see this triangle going up, but from the side looks like a rectangle and you also have the rest of the block here. And if you look from the top, looking down, it just looks like a rectangle. So you need to be able to imagine the object from all of these views. And with more and more practice, it will become easier and easier. So we can finally try to solve this, and of course the answer is B. They will definitely try to trick you in the answer choices. Like, if you look at A, they are trying to get you by putting the triangle on the side here. There is definitely a triangle shape if you look from the front, but it will not be going in that direction seen in answer choice A. So, always be careful of the little tricks. 
Also, if you look in C and D, the proportions are off, so make sure to pay close attention to the proportions of the shape. In C, you can see that the two sections of rectangles are too wide when you compare it to the green side that I drew down here. And when you look at D, the proportions are off as well. So always be careful with the sizing and proportions as well. Test strategy number two is that every plane of the 3D object that is parallel to your line of vision from a certain view will not influence that view. So you can see in these pictures that the grayed out sections are the parts that are parallel with each plane of view. So from the front, these planes here are not going to influence the shadow because they are parallel with your line of vision or the light that you would cast on the object. So the shadow that appears behind the object does not show these lines. The same can be seen for the end view. If you're looking from the side, these grayed out planes have no influence on the final shadow. And the same can be said for the top view. So let's apply all the strategies and rules in example. So let's do process of elimination and just go through the answer choices one at a time, seeing which one is the correct keyhole. Okay, so let's look at A first. So this is a top view of the object. So you want to just imagine we are looking down at the object from the top. So we want to compare each of these protrusions or shapes to the original object to see if they all match up. And you want to look at all the details and pay close attention to all angles and shapes. So for this one, I can see that down here, this is not correct because in the original picture, these two indentations occur at the same level. But in this answer choice, you can see that this comes down a little further. So this one is incorrect. Now let's go to D, since this is also looking at the object from the top, and it is similar to A. So for this one, if you look at this little rectangle here protruding at the top, you can see that it is too thin and the object is a bit wider. So this is the incorrect answer as well. So now let's look at E since this is also a top view and similar to A and D. For this one, everything looks correct except for this rectangular indentation here. In the answer choice, you can see it is much wider than when compared to the original object. So this one is incorrect too. So now we are left with B and C. These two look very similar. Let's look at B first. B, I'm assuming that they are trying to go for a front view here because it is a bit skinnier and longer than if you looked at C. And C, I think, would be the side view. So now we really need to think about proportions and the sizing of the object. Looking at B, I think that it is not long enough to fit the object from the front. I also do not think it is wide enough either. So I think C is the answer. It seems the right width for it to fit sideways and the correct length as well. So answer choice C must be the correct answer. And here's the explanation for this question. As you can see from the front view, it would have needed to be a little bit longer in order to fit from the front. And the side view or left view, you can see was the correct answer because it was the correct width and length. This explanation can be found on the PAT Crusher website in the Keyhole Generator section. Let's move on to another example. 
Let's do process of elimination again to rule out the wrong answer choices to find our correct answer. So let's start with A. Looking at this one, you can see they are going for the front view here. The square or rectangle is in the middle here, which seems about right. But if you look closely, it does not seem to be entirely in the middle. And the base does not seem entirely long enough for a front view. So this must be incorrect. Let's look at answer choice B now. This one looks like it could be a side view because the rectangle is now all the way to the side of the keyhole. This seems incorrect to me because if you pay close attention, you can see that the levels of this base are off because if you look at the original picture, the base shape is all on one level. And here you can see that this level is up and this one is a little bit further down. So this must be incorrect. Let's move on to C now. This again looks like a side view. The rectangle is again at the side of the keyhole and the levels look correct for this one. So, so far, this one seems correct. So let's also keep it for now and we can come back to it after. Let's move on to D now. This seems to me that they were going for a front view again. The rectangle is more towards the middle. But as you can see, it is not exactly right in the middle. But in the original object, the rectangle appears to be in the middle. So this one is not correct either. Now let's look at E. This one is looking from a top view. So imagine you are looking down at the object. This appears to be correct. The shapes all look the same and the indentations look the same. However, it seems that the proportions may be a little off. If you look closely, this large indentation here at the top is too small here in the answer choice. In the original object, this is a bit wider and a little deeper. So this must be wrong as well. And therefore, the correct answer must be C. And here's the explanation. This one was very tricky, and sometimes the wrong answer is off just by the sizing or proportions. So you always need to pay attention to all the small details of the shape, size, and proportions. This section can be very difficult, and they may try to trick you. So with lots and lots of practice, it will become easier and easier. Okay guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you want more practice problems, you can check out PAT Crusher. And I have a code for you guys. It's PAT 20 And you can get 20% off your account with PAT Crusher. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.